Great. Tim worked out yesterday that we're only maybe a, a year or two off touring Flanders and Swan longer than Flanders and Swan did. Now she hadn't got smart to give her advice, so came tiptoeing down to her love. Like thunder, the forest re-echoed the sound of the song that they sang when they met. His inample arter adjusted her garter. <laughs> Is it a, um, a comedic style that you still enjoy to this day? Then the no, it's great. Know. It's classic. I mean, it's I mean, it's some. I think it's something that is massively enduring as well. You get double acts now. Fry and Laurie. You, you know, at the end of Fry and Laurie. Hugh Laurie used to sit down at the piano. Stephen Fry used to mix a drink, and they used to do a, you know some sort of trumpet playing thing. And it's that that enduring image of two blokes in a dinner jacket with a piano. And that's, there's something about that kit, and the widow do it very well. Armstrong and Miller are now doing a parody of it. And it's, it's, there's something within the British psyche that remembers Flanders and Swan, even though it doesn't necessarily know that it's remembering Flanders and Swan. And that's quite exciting. It was on the Monday morning, the guest man came to call. The guest that wouldn't turn, I wasn't getting guests at all. He tore up all the scutting boards to try and find the main. And I had to call a carpenter to put them back again. Oh, it all makes work for the working man to do. Just on the Tuesday morning, the carpenter came round. He hammered and he chiseled and he said, Look what I found. Oh, he enjoys the full of dry rot, but I'll put them all to rights. Then he nailed right through a cable. And out went all the lights. Oh, it all makes work for the working man to do. Is the, um, the relationship that you both have on stage, is that kind of exactly the same as it was for yes. Flanders and Swan? Because obviously you, you, you are very much enjoying yourself as well, even when uh, Tim is uh, almost having a go at you. But. Yes, I mean, it, it's similar to the relationship that Flanders and Swan themselves had. Swan was quite different from me. He was much more energetic. To tell my heart, I had to develop my own resolve. I found my heart was a bit of a devil to play. So utterly wound to give you a sound, a beautiful sound, so rich and round. In terms of the new material, we had the, the, <clears throat> a new sort of political song tonight. Yeah. Um, is that kind of easy to just pull in a style and... and sh well, that, that uh, you're talking about the budget song. That is basically a song that is, was written by Flanders and Swan about, at the time, Callaghan and Healy. And so all we've really done is to just change the names Callaghan for Cameron and Healy for Osborne. And obviously we've had to slightly change some of the jokes because they relate to a very specific economic <laughs> set of situations and we're in a slightly different set of it. So we've slightly tweaked a couple of the e economic references to bring that up to speed, but very little else we've done with it. Yeah. There's a hole in my budget, dear Cameron, dear Cameron. There's a hole in my budget, dear PM, my dear. Venman, dear Osborne. It would be such a shame because, as we said, there isn't much TV footage left if people forgot about Flanders and Swan because the songs are brilliant. They are brilliant comedy songs.